Back in 2003, Terminator 2 received an extreme DVD release, which included a digital copy of the movie in HD, carrying a resolution of 1440 by 816 p Unfortunately, the digital copy requires an internet connection to a service no longer available. However, using FreeMe2, we can decrypt the Windows media video files and regain access to the digital copy on the disk. Before we begin, you'll need to have a copy of Terminator 2 Extreme DVD, specifically Disk 2. You'll also need to download FreeMe2. So after you've purchased the disc, which looks like this, please don't mix it up with the Ultimate DVD. It does not have it. This only exists on the Extreme DVD, which may not come with this metal sleeve, but it should have this disc case cover. After you've bought that Extreme DVD copy, you want to have it on your possession and also make sure your computer has a DVD or Blu-ray drive, which can read DVDs. Once you have that ready to go, you can go to SourceForge and go to sourceforge.net slash projects slash freeme2 where you can then download the freeme2 application. So go ahead and click download, give it a moment, and in case you're wondering, you can also download this app from the link in the description. And then the file will download. You'll notice up here I'm on Windows PC, so I'm going to go ahead and click open file. That'll take me to a nice little folder within the zip. I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and drop this in my downloads folder. And now I have a download folder here. And you'll notice there's three files in here, freeme2, libeay32.dll, and then a readme file with some readme instructions, which is typical for, for a file that's going to be ran via command line. Now, the next step is you're going to need to take that disk2 copy of your extreme DVD and put it in your disk drive of the same computer. Once you have it in your computer, you should then see it show up like this. Don't click on it. You're going to want to right click on it and click open. If you left click on it, what's going to happen is it's going to try and install the application that is on the disk and that's not what you want to do. You want to just explore the disk files. So click open and this is where it gets hard. So you want to follow this closely. You're going to want to start on the common folder. The next folder is win. The next folder is LANG. And then you're going to go to EN and then T2X. After that is E source. And then at the very bottom, you're going to see these large files here. So in case you're wondering, once again, it's going to be the disk drive, which in my case is my D drive, common, win, LANG, EN, T2X. E source and then inside the e source folder I'm gonna grab these four files so I'm gonna go ahead and click copy and I'm gonna go back to that downloads folder I'm gonna go inside that free me to folder and I'm gonna paste those files in and I'm just gonna let this do its thing and for the sake of this recording I'm going to speed up this process since it is very boring but the files are just gonna take a moment to copy over Okay, now that our files are done being copied over from the DVD onto the hard drive, I'm actually gonna make another step here to make my life easier because if you're gonna do things via command line, running the commands to a deep directory with multiple subdirectories is a bit tedious. So I'm gonna go up a directory to my downloads folder and I'm gonna cut this free me to folder. I'm gonna navigate to the root of my C drive and I'm just gonna paste that free me to folder there. So now it's just going to be C drive, free me too. Now we're going to begin the heavier part, which is the code script. I'm going to go ahead and open up the command line by hitting Windows key, CMD, and enter. That's going to bring up my command prompt, and I'm going to tuck it in just below here. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to that directory. So up here you'll notice it's C drive, free me too. So I can either go down a directory using CD dot dot, CD space dot dot, and then I can say CD free me to or I can just say CD and then change the directory where it is which in this case is free me to C drive free me to same thing so those are the two options you can get to navigate there now here's where the tricky part and I'm gonna do my best to explain this so make sure you follow this extremely closely 
the first step is I'm going to run the command line to actually run the decryption. And that's going to be free me to dot exe space dash lowercase s space and then the name of this first file up here which is t2 part 1 dot wmv because these are windows media video files windows media video 9 i believe we're going to hit enter and it's going to ask us for an sid key and it's going to be one of two options what i'm going to tell you right now is if you run one and it doesn't look right meaning it just looks like garble then you entered the wrong code which can happen you want to copy paste these exactly as they are from the description I'm going to copy one of the first options here and then I'm going to paste it in here exactly now notice I have this quotation and this space in the beginning that is absolutely critical don't think that you're supposed to just throw in everything that is inside of the quotation you actually need the quote and that space there and then I'm going to hit enter it's going to begin decrypting the file. You'll notice already up here, it's got freed hyphen T2 part one. When it's done decrypting, Windows will automatically create a thumbnail because it recognizes that file. And there you go. That's how you know you successfully decrypted the file. If you do this, I'll show you how it works. If you do it the wrong way, I'm going to copy the other code and I'm going to do this on the second file. So I'm going to show you a shortcut I'm just gonna hit up arrow and I'm gonna replace the two in part or I'm sorry the one in part one I'm gonna replace it with two I'm gonna hit enter it's gonna ask me for that decryption key I'm gonna paste in the second option that we have as a decryption key you'll notice this is still showing like it's gonna be successful but if I go back to my file no thumbnail if I try to play it it looks like my computer's crashing so that obviously didn't work so that's a very important key is make sure that when the decryption does work, you actually check the file afterwards to make sure the right decryption key is working. If I go back and I try to run it again and I paste in that first key that worked for me, it's going to go through the process again and show success and it'll play just like that first one would. So let's just give it a moment. We'll do the next thing for part three and then followed by part four. And I'll just keep using my shortcut here which is i'm just going to hit up arrow when it's done i'm going to replace two with three i'm going to hit enter paste in that key again hit enter once more and now it's decrypting the part three file okay and now we're on to the last one which is part four i'm going to rename that use the up arrow shortcut rename three to four hit enter paste in my key hit enter again and i'm just going to wait for that to play out Okay, we're now done. We have all four parts. You'll notice here the original copies off the disk, which are still encrypted, don't have a thumbnail. But the ones that we just did, which have the prefix freed and a dash, those are the ones that we can now play. And if you notice, if I try to play it back here, I now have a file that fully plays on my computer. And one thing I want to point out is if I actually try and open it, I'm going to just pause it here real quick just so it doesn't try to play back. If I click here and I look at the codec, it gives you some information here, but to me, the most important aspect here is the ratio. I'm sorry. The most important aspect here is the resolution. It's 1440 by 816 P, which is very interesting to see on this file, given that this was 2003. Um, if I actually come back here and I change my view to details, you'll actually see that these files were all last modified on May 8th of 2003. So all the files actually still show the original timestamp that this disk was pressed, which is very fascinating. That's all you need to do to decrypt the files. Unfortunately, if you're trying to use this on, let's say a Plex server, for example, you're most likely going to need to convert them into a file that it can use. Uh, the trick is you can get it to work on Plex, but it can have some issues. Most time, most people just wanna go with a simple MKV MP4 and just use an H.264 uh, codec, which is just the easiest way. It's easy on your server as well. But I hope this has been useful to you. Um, I know this trick is old, but it's fascinating to see that, to be honest, there was such a, a high quality version 
of this movie back in 2003. It still surprises me how good this looks, and this is before Blu-ray even existed. So if you like Terminator 2, I hope this has been useful. Please give me a like. Please give me a subscribe, and thank you for watching. You have a good one.